So once again, the properties of a gas are as follows. Temperature, pressure, volume. The first gas law that we're going to look at, the first, the first way to examine these, is going to be examining changes between these three states. And for that, we have the combined gas law. The combined gas law states that pressure and volume are directly proportional. If I have a certain amount of pressure and volume here, if I increase my pressure, my volume has to decrease to keep that same proportion. And all of these proportions are going to stay the same. Temperature is inversely proportional to both pressure and volume. So what that means is that if I increase my temperature, my pressure and or volume must also increase. In order to do calculations using the combined gas law or any of the other gas laws that we're going to look at, we need to know the proper units of measurement. Now, for temperature, there is an absolute scale that we need to use. We can't use Fahrenheit or Celsius because those are both relative to certain temperatures around us. Because we're working with division and ratios, the temperature that we need to use is kelvins. So temperature will always be measured in kelvin. Often you'll get a problem that gives you the temperature in degrees Celsius, and you'll need to convert it to Kelvin. So if you get Celsius, convert it to Kelvin by taking whatever temperature it is, let's say it's 10 degrees Celsius, and add 273 degrees to it, and then you'll get degrees Kelvin. So 10 degrees Celsius would be 293 Kelvin. Okay? Pressure. There are two units of pressure that we're going to use. There are a lot of different units, but we're only going to use two of them. The first one is very convenient, it's atmospheres. One atmosphere of pressure is equal to the pressure, the natural pressure we have on Earth. So it is, it is the idea of what's the pressure of our atmosphere, let's call that one atmosphere. So it makes things very convenient for using. However, the more accurate way of measuring things, because we want to be able to think of things anywhere in the universe, we need a, a solid system of measurement, we use the SI units of Pascal's. That's abbreviated with a P a, capital P, lowercase a. One Pascal is equal to one Newton of force over one square meter. Okay? For your convenience, one atmosphere of pressure is equal to 101.1 kilo Pascals. We will commonly use kilo Pascals, which is 1,000 Pascals, because one Pascal is a very small amount of pressure. So currently you are experiencing 101.1 kilo pascals. All right, and then volume. This one's nice and simple. We already have it, we already use it. We're gonna use volume in liters. We could also use milliliters. We could also use cubic meters. The conversion between these three is actually quite simple. There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, we should already know that, and then one cubic meter is equal to 1,000 liters. We came up with liter because even though we base all of our length measurements on the meter in the SI system, a cubic meter is a whole heck of a lot of stuff. So think of that, one cubic meter be a massive cube of liquid. We don't want a massive cube of liquid. We want to keep track of things more in, you know, the, the bottle size. This is about a liter. Okay, so now that we have our measurements, let's look at a sample problem. So our sample problem is we have a canister of gas that is starting out at room temperature, room conditions. Its pressure is going to be one atmosphere. Its volume is going to be one liter. So we're imagining that this, sitting at a temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius, gets put in a pot of boiling water. So 
that temperature is going to increase, so we get heat added to the system, the temperature is going to increase to 100 degrees Celsius. The volume is going to stay the same, obviously it's a sealed container, so our volume can't change. What will our new pressure be? Okay, so first we need to convert our temperatures into kelvins, so 20 degrees Celsius add 273, it's going to be 293 kelvins. Our final temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. What is that in kelvins? 273 plus 100, 373 kelvins. Okay, and then we just plug our numbers into our equation, do some minor algebra, and solve. So my first pressure is 1, my first volume is 1, divided by my initial temperature of 293 kelvins. That's going to equal pressure, P2, is what I'm looking for times the 1 liter of volume divided by 373 kelvins. Okay? Do some minor algebra rearranging this. I'm going to multiply both sides by 373. That's going to cancel this side out. And then I'm going to have 373 Anything times 1 is 1, so this all becomes 1, and this will even out. So I get 373 over 293 equals P2. Then we just plug those numbers into our calculators. And I get a pressure of 1.27 atmospheres. Let's look at another one. Alright, and this problem is exactly something that you guys could quite easily do at home. I've got a little balloon, pressure of one atmosphere, it's got 0.25 liters of air, and my temperature, I'm going to start it freezing, it's going to be 0 degrees Celsius. And then I'm going to raise that temperature to 100 degrees Celsius, just put it in some boiling water, and then I'm going to figure out what's my new volume going to be. The balloon is able to expand, so it's going to continue to expand to keep that pressure even. So in a lot of these processes, in a lot of these changes, one of our variables will be forced to stay the same. First thing we need to do in almost all of these problems, the first thing you're going to need to do, convert that Celsius to Kelvin. So 0 degrees Celsius, add 273, it's going to be 273 Kelvins. 100, 373 Kelvins. Now we just take our numbers, plug them into our equations. P1, that's going to be 1 times V1, which is 0.25, divided by T1, which is 273. That's going to be equal to, P2 is going to be 1 again, V2 we don't know, divided by temperature of 373. So rearrange that, I'm going to get 373 on this side, I'm going to take 373 multiplied by both sides, it's going to cancel out over here. I'm going to get 373, the ones are just going to cancel out, times 0 0.25 divided by 273. That leaves me with V2 being equal to 0 0.34. So my volume goes up to 0 0.34.